Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. In today's video we're going to look at the three different types of destructive plate boundaries. Okay, so there's three different destructive boundaries and we're going to look at each of those and into this uh, video. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at is what do they actually look like? Okay, so I'll show you uh, an image of the three different uh, types of destructive plate boundaries now. So here we have the three different types of uh, destructive boundaries. What we have, and the first one is an oceanic and continental crust uh, crashing against each other, so colliding with each other. On this one, you've got an oceanic and an ocean oceanic crust uh, colliding with each other, and on this one here, you've got a continental and continental crust uh, colliding with each other. Okay, so these are destructive plate boundaries. Sometimes uh, they're known as convergent plates. Okay, so convergent uh, plate boundaries as well. Just so you know. And the first one we have up here is going to be uh, an oceanic and a continental crust. So an example of an oceanic and continental uh, crust that's in collision is the Nazca plate and the set American plate. And when these two plates uh, collide with, with each other, the heavier oceanic crust uh, always subducts, always sinks uh, below the, co uh, the continental plate into the cenosphere. And often it can sink up to 100 kilometers in depth, okay, into the stenosphere. The reason why the oceanic crust always subducts and always goes beneath the continental crust is because it's heavier, the oceanic crust is heavier, it's more dense, and the rock that's made up of is heavier. Uh, usually, an uh, what the oceanic crust is made up of is, is uh, heavier, like older rock, like such as basalt, where con the continental crust is usually made up of uh, lighter um, and not as dense uh, crust, uh, rock such as granite. Some key features you need to know about uh, this destructive boundary when the oceanic and continental crust meet is that usually it forms an ocean trench. Okay, so just along here, um, an ocean trench uh, will usually form. Okay, so you usually f uh, find an ocean trench um, when you have an oceanic and continental cr uh, crust in collision with each other. Um, volcanoes usually form, um, and usually you get quite uh, big composite and ash and, cil and cylinder uh, volcanoes. An example of these would be uh, would be like in the Andes. One thing you can see here is you can see that actually fold mountains um, can form, and fold mountains uh, do form when oceanic and continental uh, crust are in collision with each other. Um, and what happens is the continental plate uh, scrapes layers of sediment off the ocean floor and these rocks then buckle and fold into high uh, fold mountains. An example would be Andes in South America. And we'd said down here that the oceanic crust will subduct beneath the continental crust and as it's been as it's sinking the rock will start to melt and it can be it can be forced down a hundred kilometers. And as the rocks are melting I mean forced down what we can find is we'll find that the the rocks will be metamorphosed, and what that means is that they will change to metamorphic rocks because of the heat and the pressure that the rocks will will be under. They will change to metamorphic rocks. The next thing we're going to look at is when an oceanic plate and an oceanic plate meet each other. Okay, obviously they going to be, they may be caused to meet because of the convection currents, um, and the mantle causes them to. Uh, collide with each other and if it's an oceanic and an oceanic plate uh, sorry an oceanic and oceanic crust that come into contact with each other um, an example of this would be the Pacific plate and the Philippines plate what happens is subduction does actually happen and the older and heavier plate will be the one that will subduct okay so that older heavier plate will subduct beneath the the lighter younger uh, plate. So, for example, here you can see the, uh, the like this one here on the left hand side. This one has been forced under. So this one here is obviously heavier rock, and that's the reason why it's been uh, it's it's subducting beneath the the younger and lighter rock. Some key features that will form um, at oceanic and oceanic crust when they're in collision is you'll get um, a trench. Okay, now the trench will be deep. But it'll be narrow, so it won't be as wide as it as it was um in the oceanic and continental, but it'll be very very deep. Okay, so it'll be very narrow and very deep. 
like I said, the all the older, heavier plate will subduct. So as it subducts, the rock's going to melt and sink. And as the rock, uh, as the plate descends, um, underneath the the other plate, um, the heat uh, and the pressure that's going to be caused from the subduction is going to cause the the rock to me to melt. And what this will form is like a, a magma re reservoir. And this will actually, the magma will find its way up um, to uh, little fissures and cracks to form a volcano. And as the volcano uh, cones rise in the ocean floor, they form uh, volcanic island arcs. An example of this would be uh, the, the Japan Islands. Okay, this is the Japanese ar island arcs. The next one we're going to look at is the continental crust and continental cr crust when they come into collision with each other. What happens? So when a continental crust and a continental crust um, come into collision with each other, they both uh, crust refuse to subduct. Okay, so not much subduction will actually take place. Now you will get a bit of subduction, but both refuse to go downward because they're both very like, like very thick. So what happens is it. The the boat crusts tend to buckle up, okay, and form a very very high fold mountains. An example of this would be the Himalayas. And because of this, the great pressure of the plates actually buckling up, you can actually they do, like you will form earthquakes will actually occur here, because of the pressure will build up build up and then maybe it might slip and and the pressure will release uh one of the continental crusts that uh, the fault line. This will cause. Uh, seismic waves and tremors to be to, to to be felt and it'll create like an earthquake. So, continental crust and continental crust subduction doesn't really happen as much here. It will happen a bit because one plate will come, one one plate will be will be forced to sub be subducted a little bit, but both kind of hold their ground, and call and both end up like causing each other to buckle up and form really really high fold mountains. Such as the Himalayas, where we've got the the biggest mountain in the world, uh, Mount Everest. Okay, so now that I've explained uh, the three different types of uh, destructive plate boundaries, I just wrote the some notes for you, so you can now take them down. Okay, so if you'd like to pause the video, please pause it now, and you can take down uh, the notes that I've wrote for you, or you could just take the notes. Uh, you could just re you could um, rewind uh, the video back a few minutes, listen to it again and take down as I speak. Um, but if you wanted to save you the hassle, you can just copy down the main points that I have there. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the, the this tutorial um, and learned lots from it. If you did, could you please like maybe leave me some feedback? You can do that through the, the Contact Us page on the website. So if you go to examinevision.ie, www.examinevision.ie, you can leave us a message there through the contact us page, or you can just you can get us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Instagram and Examine Vision for you, and you can leave a message. I love getting messages and feedback about how the videos are helping people. That's why I create them. Remember, the videos are free. Um, it it costs me money to 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 create this website. Um, so just do it for you guys. So if you could leave me some feedback, that would be great. Thank you.